Hello! That was a little bit excessive, but I'm very, very excited to start the course. So in this section, we're going to be talking about browsing the web. It's the first part in the how the internet works section. And some of you are thinking right now, whoa, 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 Andre, like, come on. I know how the internet works. Let's get to the heavy, heavy, you know, technical stuff. But this is something that actually took me quite a few years to learn. And I see a lot of people just skimming the surface of this stuff without fully understanding how everything works together without having those foundations. It's actually very, very difficult to think about performance, optimizing your site and so on and so on. So we're going to start off very, very basic and we're going to learn something that it took me many years to learn. And once I figured this out, everything clicked. So just hang in there. Trust me. I promise you, you'll learn something new in this section. And we're going to be talking about browsing the web. We have over here a laptop and we have our web browser, let's say Google Chrome. And we typically like to say, go to Google and we're going to visit Google. So we type in google.com and well, what happens technically when we do that? When we enter google.com, we press enter on our keyboard. We ask a question, who's this google.com fellow? And that question gets asked all the way down to our ISP. ISP is internet service provider. And I put a dollar sign up here, just so you know, those are the people that you pay so you can have internet. So if you're in the States, that's Kojiko, Verizon. If you're in Canada, that'd be Bell or Rogers, or, you know, depending on your country, you have your big, big companies that make a lot of money from internet usage. So they get that request and they send that off to something called the DNS server. So domain name servers. And we'll get into that later on in the course. So don't worry too much about it. But essentially, it's a phone book, a phone book that has the list of all these URLs like google.com and it has the addresses of them. So exactly like a phone book, they know where google.com is. So they say, hey, you know, I don't know Mr. Google.com personally, but I do know his address. So you should go check him out. So they send off that request back through the ISP and the website or the web browser, Google Chrome in this case, gets 172.217.723. All right, cool, but nothing's showing up yet. There's no, there's no Google.com. I can't do any searches yet. Okay, we received uh, what we call an IP address. So think of this as something that every single computer has one. Anything that's connected to the internet has its own address. So the laptop that I'm working on right now has an IP address. Your laptop or computer has an IP address. So this IP address allows the internet to work. Essentially, it knows our location, our address. So what we do now with Google.com, we know this IP address, the browser sends off another request to the Google servers. And it knows where the Google servers are because, well, because we have this address. So we go seek it out. And you can think of servers as computers, essentially. My laptop could be a server. Your computer could be a server. Servers are essentially computers that are sometimes in basements or in huge server farms. And they have a piece of software running that just like at a restaurant, where a server brings you food, it knows how to send you files when you request for them. So we send this off and the Google servers say, oh yeah, yeah, no problem. Let me give you my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And we'll get into what those are later on in the course, but think of them as just text files. There are text files that Google is gonna send to the browser so we can have Google working. So let me just uh, minimize this and show you what it's doing. So we're copying these files and Google server is saying, yeah, no problem. Thanks for asking for Google. Here it is. And the web browser receives the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So if we go to the next section, boom, we have google.com and everything's working. Now, that sounded like a whole bunch of stuff that happened in between. And when we're on the internet, everything is quite fast. But yeah, underneath the hood, all of that is happening. And it's crazy to think how fast everything works. Don't take my word for it. Let's just check this process that I'm not just making stuff up for you. If what we learned was correct, technically, we can skip this process, right? I mean, if we know the address of Google, can we just, you know, 
go into this directly and just instead of putting google.com just put in this in our search bar and it automatically goes to the google servers well let's try it out let's uh let's open up google here and ooh, what a pretty picture all right so we go to google.com nothing crazy here and that's great but what if i instead of that i put in the ip address so 172 there's no way i could remember this address so i've done this before and i press enter look at that google.com so as you can see i'm not lying it's what's happening the ip address gets sent to the google servers google servers send us a few files so that we can finally load google.com in the next section we're going to do something fun we're going to break a bit of Google and toy around with the website again to show you how cool all of this technology is. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.